As one coming from the south and the brilliant white of noon, with full knowledge of nature and active communion with God, I now go toward the north into the fog and abandoning at every step a piece of myself, giving way diminishing at each step, leaving a little more white for you, a little more clarity and warmth, a little more vitality until the end of my journey, when the rose blossoms in its fullness on the cross. I am Cagliostro. The rose cross unites the material and the spiritual. It is a harmonious integration of all aspects of life. And while it's inherently western, its ideas are universal. An example is the lotus flower, which like the rose signifies purity and enlightenment. Basic breakdown. The cross is the material world and the human body. It stands for reconciliation of opposites and is one of the most ancient symbols predicting Christianity. It signifies fertility and eternal life in ancient traditions like Egypt. It is also a precursor to creation, represented by the rose blooming in its center. Besides beauty and love, the rose is associated with the Christian Virgin Mary. It symbolizes perfection resulting from spiritual development and culminating in the founding of spiritual consciousness. Before getting into that, consider subscribing to my channel if you find the content valuable and entertaining. Check my books such as my products on Gumroad and Etsy. Also, feel free to support me using the provided in the description links. By supporting me, you also help my work, keeping me improving and growing as a creator. Rosicrucianism The Rose Cross is mainly associated with Rosicrucianism. Emerging in the 17th century, the Rosicrucian manifestos Fama Fraternitatis and Confession Fraternitatis claim the symbol represents a secret society, and this includes alchemists, theosophists and mystics. Invisible College Defined as an invisible college, this Rosencrucian brotherhood aimed to pursue spiritual wisdom and knowledge. To stay adequate, religion must follow the race's evolution, so the invisible college strived to prepare Christianity for a new phase. It is also said that its founder was Christian Rosenkreuz, yet many believe the movement's roots cannot be traced as they originated in antiquity. Christian Rosenkreuz Rosenkreuz is a legendary, often called mythical figure. Pivotal to numerous seekers, his story became the central myth of the Rosicrucian tradition, and this includes the Golden Dawn as its most practical order. Rosenkreuz represents the ultimate adept. It is the person embarking on a self-transformation journey, searching for higher knowledge, truths and meaning. Like Rosenkreuz shared that he learned from sages and mystics, such a person helps others by sharing their wisdom, and that matches the included Cagliostro quote very well. Let me know if you agree. Children of White Paracelsus described the Rose Cross as adepts as paraphrasing, immortals exalted to God. The German philosopher Karl von Eckerstrassen defines them as children of white without tolerance for mystification and secrecy. He also called them white bringers in the temple governed by God, i.e. the invisible college. Others view them as geniuses from all walks of life. Micro and Macrocosm Lectures of the Rosicrucian Order of Amorg include one basic explication of the Rose Cross. The smaller and bigger crosses represent the micro and the macrocosm. Comment In my humble opinion, this alludes to the fact that Western esotericism places the individual in the center of the universe, which is their wife. So self-help likely partially is onto something by emphasizing one as the most important person in their life, since their wife is no longer without them. Let me know if you agree. Spirit and Matter The Rose Cross conveys that spiritual enlightenment is intimately connected and not separated from the material world. It communicates that the true spiritual journey leads to a deeper understanding of the physical world. It also increases awareness of one's true place in it and, as Dion Fortune says, spirit and matter are like water and ice, the two states of the same thing. Comment Unlike Eastern mystics, Western magicians slash practical occultists seek to conquer matter, not retreat from it. Emphasized in mystical Kabbalah, such a perspective is best expressed in modern approaches. Namely, not waiting to get enlightened so you can do practical work, but using that to put yourself in a position where enlightenment is accessible and actually affordable. Also, by having illuminating mystical experiences after doing practical work and actively taking action in the world of action. Complementing each other, these are the approaches I mostly follow and two of the reasons for liking the Rose Cross so much. Let me know if you agree. Different. As found in a moment, the Rose Cross and the Tree of Life contain all correspondences of Western magic. 
Like the truncated pyramid, the cavalry cross and the cube, the rose cross symbolizes Tiferet, the sun sphere, which is the whole tree of life center. As a vessel for the heart consciousness and home to all sacrificial gods symbolized by the cross, Tiferet is the opposite's reconciliation. It is the sixth sephira, whereas the cross is an unfolded six-sided cube. And this alludes to Tiferet's function of the form's first foreshadowing, as the cube is the simplest form of solid. A magical weapon. Magical weapons suggest the force to the operator's imagination. Like elemental ones have their places, the Rose Cross Woman is Tiferet's weapon. It hangs at the solar plexus of the Adeptus Minor. Signified by 5 equals 6, the last means once is accepted in the inner order Rosaia Rubae et Oroaia Crucis, and the solar plexus is associated with Tiferet. Containing all elements, the Rose Cross represents the Operation Spiritual Aspect and Archangel. The elemental weapon on the other hand symbolizes the force operating in its sphere and brought down to coal. Given that, the Rose Cross correlates to all practical operations. The Beginning Each Rose Cross has a tiny white dot in the center. Pretty important, the same is the symbol starting point representing the universe's beginning. And some view that as the three wells of negative existence or as their crystallization discussed in my post on the Sephiroth. The Cube the white dot contains a cube creating three dimensions, up, down, front, back and left, right. It also forms seven positions including the center and the six sides becoming the earlier mentioned squares. And while that's a 12th edge figure, adding the dimensions, the sides and the edges gives 22. 22 is the number of Hebrew letters symbolizing the basis for everything. And the reason is that Kabbalah views divinity as speaking things into existence. So the initially Watan potentiality of everything, i.e. the cube, eventually unpacks into manifestation. This is often likened to an acorn holding the potential of other oak trees, and based on my research, the origin of this comparison is Kabbalah unveiled where McGregor Matters equates the Sephiroth, especially Keter, to acorns containing oaks. Inner Goat The unpacked cube is a golden cross. It is made of six squares and has a smaller rose in its center. The water has five petals associated with the human being, the microcosm, as five represent human fingers, senses and limbs. This positioning communicates that five, the microcosm, emerges from six, the macrocosm, and they remain in a permanent relationship, like spiritual and material. 11. Equating five with six also shows the attainment of the great work which unites the subject, the magician, five, with their object of desire, the angel, six. Then the figure is neither 6 nor 5, but 11, which is the number of magic, and the Telemic goddess knew it. Telim Speaking of that, in Telemic cosmology, the rose symbolizes knew it, the boundless star goddess stretching infinitely. The cross is Hadith, the ultimate focal point in the center, and according to Crowley, adepts must align themselves with these symbols to achieve the mystical union of opposites leading to spiritual fulfillment. As mentioned in other videos, Tiferet represents this stage, it is the ultimate equilibrium such as the goal of all magical operations and as found in Crowley's book 4, quote, The object of any magic ceremony is to unite the macrocosm and the microcosm. As in optics, the angles of incidence and reflection are equal. You must get your macrocosm and microcosm exactly balanced, vertically and horizontally, or the images will not coincide, unquote. The ultimate existence. The miniature rose in the rose cross is the ultimate existence, bridging the gap between domains. It is regarded as pure being, sourcing everything, hence it may be speculated that the same is Keter. One reason is that Keter is undivided unity beyond duality. Another is that there is no separation between individuals and the whole in the small rose stage. And though that is static, its four thorns represent space, time, position and dimension establishing. Rosamundi the bigger rose in the rose cross is called Rosa Mundi, the rose of the world. Regarded as the key to interpreting nature's forces, the same overflows with symbolism. Rosa Mundi includes the Hebrew alphabet and the Sephiroth, representing the 32 parts of the Tree of Life, as the Sephiroth are parts too. And as found in a second, the petals grouping mirrors 3, 7 and 12. Mother Letters Expanding from the pure being, slash, ultimate existence, Rosamundi starts with the three big petals containing the three mother letters. Representing the primal elements fire, water and air, 
These correspond to the full, the hanged man and Aeon slash judgment cards, such as Pats 11, 23 and 31. Red, blue and yellow are considered primary colors, so the petals background symbolize the elements. Double letters The mid-sized petals include the seven double letters. Comprised of them, the second circle represents cards the Magus or Magician, High Priestess, the Empress, Sun, Fortune or Wheel of Fortune, Tower and the Universe. These correspond to paths 12, 13, 14, 21, 27, 30 and 32. And besides that, the second circle holds the seven classical planets Mercury, Sun, Venus, Moon, Saturn, Mars and Jupiter. Single letters The smallest petals are the highest in the count. Besides the so-called single letters, they house the 12 zodiac signs attributing to paths 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 24, 25, 26, 28 and 29. Also to cards the Star, the Hierophant, the Lovers, the Chariot, Adjustment or Justice, the Hermit, the Devil, Death, the Emperor, Art or Temperance and the Moon. Sigil Magic The Rose Cross can serve as a tool for constructing sigils based on various aims. This employs the bigger rose element, and like sigils of Archangels, Angels and Intelligences, these start and finish with a small circle and a line. Ascribe to the position of the first letter in the rows, the former declares the start of the word and does the sigil. The second signifies the end, marking the place of the last letter. And while the technique is similar to magic squares, Hebrew can be transliterated, so any word can be created and used for charging objects. The bigger cross Like the smaller one, the bigger cross represents an unfolded cube, so the miniature composition is reflected by the bigger one. Whereas the former associates with potentiality, the second stands for manifestation. It also expresses yod hey vav hey and the four Kabbalistic worlds. The four Kabbalistic worlds yod hey vav hey conveys manifestation's four-stage process. It also maps to the Tree of Life, which grows top to bottom and roots in the heavens. Being the most abstract, the first stage or world is the archetype of Atsiwut. Referred to as the highest divinity, this one is represented by Yod. Attributed to He, the second is Briya, or the creative, housing archangels and ideas. The third is Yetzaira, which corresponds to Vau and is home to angels and formation. And lastly comes Asaya, the physical world of action and intelligences represented by the second He. The four parts of the soul. Microcosmically, yod He vav He represents the four parts of the soul. Kia, the life force and will. Neshama, the spiritual superconsciousness and understanding. Ruach, the intellect and day-to-day -day consciousness and the nefesh and guf, the animal soul and physical body. The elements Like yod hey vav hey, the rose cross contains the elements of ancient philosophy. Yod is fire, he water, vav is air and the second he earth. The elements are not their physical counterparts. They symbolize everything as theoretically everything combines one or more of them, possessing degrees of their characteristics. And as stressed in magical books, they are the map, not the territory. Taros suits. Also matching Yod Hei Vav Hei, Taros division live in the Rose Cross. Ones are Yod, Fire and Red, Cups are He, Water and Blue, Swords are Vau, Air and Yellow, and Pentacles are the second He with the Earth covers. Meaning that the Rose Cross contains the elements and the suits in its extremities, though that's not shown explicitly. Fourfold Nature. Yod also stands for kings or knights, and the same applies to He and Queens, Vau and Princess, and the second He and Princesses. Therefore, the tarot shows how the divine's fourfold nature is reflected in the human soul. The Hexagram Underneath the bigger rows, a square represents spirit with the hexagram and the planet's ordering. It also includes Ararita, kinda low-key, like the planets do elemental, planetary and zodiacal signs. And to learn more about Ararita, check my lesser hexagram video and cheat sheet. Placed there, spirit brings order, preventing everything from falling apart. Some scholars regard spirit as the fifth element. Others claim it's not an element, but manifests slash expresses itself via different elemental ordering and proportions. So understanding spirit is only possible through knowing the elements. Suggestions and speculations the extended cross may be viewed as expressing Kyot Hei Vav Hei explicitly. Fire and water interact on one line, whereas air and earth on another. The king and the queen have sex, creating the prince and the princess, who repeat and become the king and the queen. 
It is a never-ending process of renovation and transmutation. Spirit is in the center, emanating and mediating between all. It is a horizontal and vertical elemental couple with spirit in the center. It also resembles the pentagrammaton Yeheshua, which groups the elements similarly to the rose cross by placing Shin between the same couples. Imaginary Circle Seen as a circle, the outer cross displays the element's gradual transition slash transformation that's based on their density or mutual qualities recognized by Aristotle. Far is dry and hot, air hot and moist, water moist and cold, and earth cold and dry. With a bit of imagination, this can also be viewed as a never-ending cycle. Perhaps complementing the former, this one suggests permanent yet gradual renovation, and such reflections may lead to thinking that the cross displays renovation through revolution, whereas the circle one through evolution. Let me know if you agree. Other devices. If you do, you'll find that the Rose Cross reflects other key devices in the Western tradition. Examples include the elemental tablets, McGregor Matrices, Golden Dawn and Telemic Drawing of Pentagrams, the solar adorations such as the Bornless Evocation, particularly on dry land tent in the water, a furling care and a flushing fire. And to learn more about Golden Dawn Pentagrams, watch my Supreme Pentagram video and get the cheat sheet on the right. Pentagrams while the suits are contained in the extremities, the pentagrams represent the court cards, namely their fourfold nature inherited by the elements, and this expresses that each element has different aspects. The court cards attribute to fire, water, air and earth, aces to quintessence or spirit. It is also that the ace contains all others, like spirit includes the elements and similar to Keter, holding the potentiality of all other spheres. Therefore, the Ace has all court cards, including the suits and the elements different aspects. Ace of Wands, Quintessence of Fire, encompasses King of Wands or Fire of Fire, Queen of Wands, Water of Fire, Prince of Wands, Air of Fire, and Princess of Wands, Earth of Fire. Elemental Tablets A similar dynamic is found in the Elemental Tablets and the Mystical Tablet of Union. The Tablet of Union rules the four others, which, according to the Golden Dawn, are the great table reformed by Raphael. In the case of Wands, Bitom, quintessence of Far, is the ace of Wands, containing the entire Far tablet with its four quadrants, and these correlate to the elements' different aspects and the suit. B is spirit and the ace, I, air and the prince, O, earth and the princess, and M, Far and the king. The ace is in the center of the tablet, the king, queen, prince and princesses in the corresponding subquarters, and the 32 six small cards correspond to the great cross dividing each tablet. Like the tarot, the rose crosses and thus magical pentagrams ordering mimics almost precisely that of the elemental tablets with quintessence in the center and the elements in the corresponding race and subquarters. Let me know if you want a video on that. Expansion and Synthesis the three upper extremities of the Rose Cross are in the Golden Dawn's flashing colors. The exception is only the lowest one attributed to Earth. This one is divided into black, russet, citrine and olive. And besides the first, these are basically different darker variations of the primal red, blue and yellow. This is because Earth contains portions of all other elements. The muddier combination suggests the elements' denser energies. Alongside black, they are synthesized after the white of the white dot produced all others. It expanded from the noting into everything, then narrowed, shrunk and reflected into earth. The crown is in the kingdom. As the Golden Dawn says, Malkut is the synthesis of all other spheres and reactions in the tree. It is their finishing wine, according to the own fortune. So, the rose cross expresses the same dynamic. The white pentagram communicates that though lower, the material world has commonalities with the highest, as it contains portions of everything, and this recalls the notion that spirit and matter remain intrinsically connected. Comment Perhaps another way to think of it is this, potentiality expands into the whole picture, and then the final result, which inevitably contains it, is earth, so spirit still prevails in the kingdom of the shades, facilitating which is the goal of the western magician. From such a perspective, the Rose Cross may have something in common with the inverted pentagram, and the reason is that they both display spirit descending into matter and perhaps shrinking, and as they say, the crown is in the kingdom and the kingdom in the crown. Alchemy According to the self-initiation into the Golden Dawn, 
Paraphrasing, alchemy aims to uncover inner wisdom while removing veils and obstacles between the mind and the divine. Next to the pentagrams are the three alchemical symbols of salt, sulfur and mercury. Often considered an undivided whole, these are called by Paracelsus the three primes. They correspond to fire, water and air, depending on who you ask. And like the elements, alchemical symbols are not their chemistry counterparts, their principles operating in everything. The three primes. Sulfur is volatile and expensive, symbolizing the life motivating urge. As the principle of composability, sulfur is associated with the burning desire for positive change. It is also derived from mercury, which it stabilizes and comes back to. Salt is a heavy substance, part of all metals nature. It also grounds sulfur and mercury. Quicksilver or mercury permeates everything living. It is the initiating principle behind all alchemy and transmutation, also the one of fusibility. While this deserves a separate post, the Rose Cross has the alchemy symbols ordered differently. Each section has one predominant and two balanced accordingly, and apparently the centered one dominates based on the element's nature. The Three Gunners Sulfur symbolizes things energy, while mercury and salt their fluidity and fixity. Crowley attributes them to Hinduism's Three Gunners. Sattva embodies the essence of Mercury. It signifies tranquility, serenity and clarity. Rajas is akin to sulfur and represents activity, excitement and fierceness. Tama resembles salt, embodying heaviness, thickness and darkness. Vitriol Together, the three primes form the symbol vitriol, which represents transformation and purification. It means visit the interior of the earth and by rectification find the hidden stone, it basically explains that inner exploration and enlightenment lead to the Philosopher's Stone. Confronting the Ignorance Salt or Tamas is associated with descending into the depths of one's being and confronting the darkness, ignorance and impurities. It is the stage of deep reflection and in my humble opinion taking inventory of one's tangible and intangible assets. Fiery Purification Corresponding to sulfur and rajas, the second stage is fiery purification and transformation. Its goal is eliminating impurities, refining character and cultivating good virtues. I'd say swapping self-destructive for productive and life-affirming habits occurs in this stage, and the same is governed by one's high will and determination. The Philosopher's Stone Lastly comes the Mercury Sattva stage. It symbolizes the purified and enlightened consciousness resulting from realizing one's true nature. So the Philosopher's Stone is really the wisdom and integration of one's hard genius often symbolized by gold. And all that matches very well the earlier discussed aspects of the Rose Cross. Big Thorns Anna Rai Behind the outer Rose Cross spread eight large thorns divided into bigger and tiny fours. The first includes Aanarai, which in Hebrew are the initials of the elements Yaminim water, Nor fire, Ruach air and Yepsha earth. In Latin Aanarai stands for Jesus Nazarenus, Rex Iodaerum, which in English translates into Jesus the Nazarene, King of the Jews. Aanarai is also interpreted as Igna Natura Renovator Integra, or by far nature is renewed. Also as Igni Nitrum Roris Invenitur, which means by far the nitter of the dew is discovered. In Hebrew, Anarai becomes Yot Nun Resh Yot, red right to left. The letters correspond to the 20th, 24th and the 30th paths associated with Virgo, Scorpio and the Sun. In that manner, each sigil is behind its corresponding letter. Virgo is behind the first and the last, whereas Scorpio and the Sun behind the second and the third. Yao and LVX Anarai is also associated with Yao, the Gnostic's ultimate deity. This finds a home in the small thorns of the big rose cross, and that's alongside LVX, an additional I, and an additional X or a cavalry cross. Yao embodies the bird death rebirth principle, sometimes attributed to thesis, antithesis, synthesis. Being one of sacrifice, Yao held the magical formula of the Aeon of Osiris, the dying god. It tells the myth of Osiris, born, killed and redeemed by his wife. On the contrary, Seth who isn't Apophis but actually fights it killed Osiris, not Apophis Typhon. Given that, the placement doesn't symbolize Osiris as actual killer. It represents the second stage, the passage to the underworld. Besides that, Osiris is also associated with the Golden Dawn student 
aiming to reach Adeptus Minor, of which the LVX are the signs, and the rolls cross the weapon. Final words. Complementing the Tree of Life, the Rose Cross is jam-packed with symbolism, all of which deserve separate posts, so I am open to suggestions. Together, the two symbols convey all correspondences of Western magic, and I think you should have both on your walls. But that's just my opinion. Let me know if you agree, such as your thoughts on the symbol and this video. Otherwise, like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel and my newsletter for more content. Consider checking my digital products, music and books. Support me with either of the links in the description and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for your time.